seated. Jesus is walking around Jerusalem, and He passes by a pool of Bethesda, which is where Bethesda Naval Hospital gets its name, because this is a pool that rumor has it, an angel comes down, stirs up the water, and sick people are all around the pool, and the first one in the water gets healed. Well, there's a guy who's been there for 38 years, and Jesus hears about him, and he feels compassion, and he goes over to the guy, and he says, do you want to be healed? Do you want to get well? And we think, what a stupid question. But is it? Do you want to get well? The guy answers, well, I, 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 you know, I, I, nobody's here to help me. Every time the water moves, somebody gets in ahead of me, and I, 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 so I don't. The guy never says yes. He makes an excuse. But he doesn't say no. So Jesus heals him. Pick up your mat and walk. And the guy does. And it's, the story ends by saying this, the day that this happened was the Sabbath. And the story's over as far as we know. And we go, way to go, Jesus. Good job. But the story's not over. If you keep reading, what happens is the guy's carrying his mat. It's on the Sabbath day. Some Jewish leaders see him and say, hey, you're not supposed to do that. The law of Moses forbids you doing any work. And the guy says, but, but the guy told me, pick up my mat and walk. And they said, who told you to do that? And he goes, I don't know, because Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. Well, later, the Bible tells us, Jesus shows up in the temple. There's the guy, and he says to the guy, you, you got well. You need to stop sinning, or else something worse is going to happen to you. And we think, why would Jesus say that? What's the guy doing that is sin? Well, the Bible doesn't tell us. John leaves out that detail, but I think the guy's lying on the ground begging. Now, why do I think that? Let's follow the story. Jesus heals the guy, pick up your mat and walk. He does, he's walking out. Jesus disappears into the crowd. The guy's carrying his mat. Somebody yells at him, stop, you can't do that. You're, it's the Sabbath, you're not supposed to work, and carrying your mat constitutes work. So the guy drops his mat. They say, who did it? He goes, I don't know. And the Jewish leaders leave. And he's standing there with his mat on the ground, and he's waiting for the Sabbath to be over when the sun goes down. So he's got a while to wait, so he rolls the thing out and he sits down. The guy has been a beggar for 38 years in the same town. Everybody's seen him. You know when you get off the 408 or something and there's people are there begging and the same people, you see them over and over again, and maybe you give them a dollar or something, but do you ever really stop and you know engage and look them in the eye and talk to them? No, you, you toss the money at them and you keep going. And this is what people have been doing with this guy for 38 years. He must have been pretty good at begging. He's been around for 38 years doing this. So he's sitting there on the ground, and somebody walks by, and they see him, and they don't think anything about it, and they toss him a dollar. And rather than going, no, 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 I'm, I'm healed. Keep your money. He goes, oh, okay. And somebody else goes by and tosses him a dollar. Somebody else goes by, and somebody else goes by. And, and rather than objecting or telling people what happened, he stuffs it in his pocket, and he may even you know, take the same position that he had for all those 38 years. And about this time, Jesus walks up and catches him and says, you were made well. You need to stop sinning or something else worse is going to happen to you. In other words, dude, I healed you. Why are you still pretending to be crippled? Don't you understand that by lying there, you're lying to everybody else that walks by. You need to stop that or something else Worse is going to happen to you, which takes us all the way back to the question that Jesus asked in the beginning. Do you want to get well? Because sadly, not everybody does. I had a pastor friend, went to the hospital to visit a guy who was there because he'd hurt his back. And my pastor friend offers to pray for the guy for healing. And the guy goes, no, 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 no. I, I don't want to get healed because then I'll have to go back to work. Just pray and ask God to take the pain away. Ooh, well then, okay. Jesus asked the guy in the pool if he wanted to get well because not everybody who's sick wants to get well. Now, most do, most do, but some only want for the pain to go away. 
And you may wonder, why would anybody not want to get well? Because like that guy my friend went to visit, if I'm sick, I have an excuse not to work. If I'm sick, people will feel sorry for me, and I'll get sympathy, and I'll get some attention. If I'm sick, I'm not responsible for my own problems. It's not my fault. I can't help it. I'm sick. Somebody else always gets down into the water quicker, and I, 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 it doesn't happen. You see, for the guy that Jesus healed, getting well cost him how he made his living. And he must have been pretty good at it. He's been doing it 38 years. Now he's going to have to get up and go to work. For some of us who are sick or hurting or feeling paralyzed in some area of our life, getting well will cost us. We're going to have to change something about ourselves, or we're going to have to start doing something healthy, or we're going to have to quit doing something unhealthy, or we're going to have to go to work, or we're going to have to be responsible, or, or all of the above. And if you're sick, or injured, or disabled, or feeling paralyzed in any area of your life right now, Jesus asks you the same question He asked that guy at Bethesda. Do you want to get well? And like that guy in the story, and like that guy my friend visited, some of us aren't sure. You see, to get well, we might have to change something. We might have to adjust our attitude or alter our behavior. If we get well, we might ha not get as much attention from our friends or families. We might not get any sympathy. If we get well, we lose our excuse to avoid some of our responsibilities. If we get well, we might have to go to work or work harder than we do now. If we get well, we might have to, we might have to give up being mad at whoever it is that hurt us. If we get well, we might have to deal with our addiction. Let's be honest. Some of us aren't well because we've chosen not to get well. Some of us, however, have not gotten well because we didn't know we could get well. And if that's you, that might be because people all your life have told you, you're never going to amount to anything. You're just no good. You're never going to succeed. You're never going to be well. Or it may be because life has been so tough for so long, like that guy at the pool at Bethesda, you can't even imagine ever being well. Or it may be because nobody ever told you, you can get well. Well, I'm here today telling you, you can. You can get well. You can be well. Jesus is here today, and He's asking you what He asked that guy at the pool. Do you want to get well? Now, if you don't, if you'd rather stay sick, if you'd rather not have to be responsible, if you'd rather not change anything, if you'd rather not start doing anything new and healthy or quit doing whatever it is that you're doing that you know is unhealthy, Jesus will leave you alone and He'll let you stay sick. But if you're tired of being sick and you'd like to get well, if you'd like to be healed or at least a little bit healthier in your spirit or your mind or your body or your emotions or your relationships or your finances, Jesus is just as here now as He was that day at the pool of Bethesda. And if you'd like to get well, tell Him. In your heart right now, tell Him, yes, Jesus, I want to get well. During the prayers of the people, in the silence, pray, yes, Jesus, I want to get well. Please heal me. Fill out a yellow card. Put on the back, pray for me for healing. And I will every day this week, and somebody else will pray for you every day next week. When you come to communion and you hold out your hands to receive Jesus in the sacrament. Also say, Jesus, I want the healing that you offer me. And after communion, go to the chapel and get somebody to pray for you, or light a candle and ask Jesus to heal you. If you're sick or hurting or feeling paralyzed in some area of your life right now, Jesus is here. He's here by the Holy Spirit. He's here in all of these precious people who are sitting around you. He's here in these words that I'm speaking right now. And He's going to be here in the sacrament. And He's asking you, 
what he asked that guy at Bethesda. Do you want to get well? Do you? Do you? 